So Tucker Carlson completely flipped his position on masks. Watch this. Many schools that do plan to reopen will do so under a series of restrictions that have no basis of any kind in science. It's a kind of bizarre health theater. Students will be kept six feet apart. Everyone will have to wear a mask. Class size will be limited. In some schools, there will be scheduled bathroom breaks, et cetera, et cetera. No sports. It's insulting. It's ridiculous. They're telling you masks don't work unless you work in a hospital? How does that work? Does mask effectiveness change based on what job you do? They're only useful if you're already sick? What? Coronavirus can spread from asymptomatic carriers. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Oh, wait, you're just too dumb to wear the mask. Okay, because they're really hard to put on. Of course, masks work. Everyone knows that. Dozens of research papers have proved it. In South Korea, Japan, Hong Kong, the rest of Asia, where coronavirus has been kept under control, masks were key. So look, we understand there's a shortage of masks. We understand only certain people should get them because it's a triage moment. We get it. But stop lying to us. That's incredible. That's incredible. Now, why did he do this? How did this come about? The answer is actually very simple. Contrarianism. It's all about contrarianism. So... When he did the previous segment, I believe that was at the time when Fauci and U.S. government agencies were like, masks don't work. Please, nobody use masks in the general public because they don't work. Now, why were they saying that? They were saying it because um, we were afraid of a mask shortage for our frontline workers who need them the most. But instead of saying, hey, we need our masks for the frontline workers, so don't buy them right now. They lied and said masks don't work. And so, you know, they lost all credibility on that moving forward. And that really was such a that really was such an important moment because it was like the beginning of it was such an absurd thing to say that like then people started to question everything that was being, you know, put out there on COVID-19. And yeah, the government has nobody to blame for themselves for that. Fauci has nobody to blame for himself but himself for that. The CDC, all of them who lied, World Health Organization, it was unacceptable. And they, they were lying, period. They were lying. It was disgusting. It was wrong. Um, now, today, we're hearing that, well, some schools are going to open up, some aren't. Trump's trying to force them all back. But some schools are opening with guidelines. And he explained some. Six feet apart, masks, reduced class sizes, so on and so forth. And, like, the connecting thread in all this stuff is that he wants to be against what the official line is. So the official line for a brief period of time was masks are bad. And so he was like, no, masks are good. The official line now is, hey, if we open the schools up, we got to have reduced class sizes, six feet apart and masks. And so he's like, no, that's crazy, bro. So it's always like, whatever the official line is, I'm just going to say the opposite. So ultimately, like I said, it's mindless contrarianism because he contradicted himself there and he didn't even realize it. On the one hand, he was saying masks are obviously good months ago, and then now he's like, masks and six feet apart and reduced class sizes? Absurd. Anti-science. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. And honestly, this is a trend I've seen a lot more of recently. Um, it's easy to make yourself feel like edgy and cool if you're just a default contrarian. Like, whatever I feel the main sentiment is that most people agree with, I'm just going to default to the opposite position. It's like, you know, listen, it, you guys won't be too surprised to learn that in, in high school and college, I was the argumentative kid who would, like, raise his hand and go back and forth with the teacher. Like, I was that prick. Probably still am to a little bit, but not as bad as I was back then. And, like, yeah, there's something about... I'm just going to be contrarian that makes somebody feel like, ooh, I'm edgy and I'm counterculture and I'm such a truth teller. And it's like, actually, no, you're just a sheep in the other direction. Like, if you're the type of sheep who always agrees with the official line or always is with the majority, then you probably haven't really thought through these issues in any serious way. But like, a contrarian is just the mirror image of that. You're just a sheep in the other way. I will default to... <laughs> Official line wrong. And it's just so stupid. Like, fucking be consistent. Have, a, have an actual take on something. 
And, you know, who the hell knows what Tucker really believes? He was getting credit for warning Trump about the coronavirus early on. But then, very strangely, within a couple months of getting the praise for warning Trump about coronavirus, he started to change his tune on it and started to sound like just like a standard conservative downplaying it in many respects. And that's what this is. That's what this is. You know, saying if we return kids to school, we shouldn't have special measures. Really? We shouldn't have special measures if we return them to school. When we know the virus is still ripping through this country and we know the ways to prevent it. And Tucker from March was correct when he said, obviously masks work. Yes, they do. It's been proven. They work. So make up your goddamn mind, man, and stop with the mindless contrarianism. We get it that on Fox News that actually might be very marketable because you got a bunch of standard doctrinaire right-wing clowns on Fox News. Hannity has never had an original thought in his entire goddamn life. His whole shtick is Republican right, Democrat wrong. Like, that's it. That's his whole shtick. So I get it. What he's doing is, like, slightly newer for, for Fox News, but, like, you look like an idiot. You look like an idiot. So, you know, maybe stop.